Welcome to A Time for Change. I'm Sibyl Marcellus here with Alexis Christophorus. It's back to school for the nation's millions of students. And so for today, we're hitting the books too. We're taking a look at the publishing industry, an industry that continues to struggle with diversity. Here's one snapshot. Of the 220 fiction books listed on the New York Times bestseller list last year, just 10% were from authors of color in a country that is nearly 40% non-white. Now, making the book world more diverse and equitable is the goal of our first guest, Rebecca Boruki. She is founder of a startup called Row House Publishing. Rebecca, welcome to A Time for Change. I'd like to get your thoughts on this stat I read when I was doing some research for our interview today. 90% of all published authors in 2018 were white. And I'd like you to weigh in on why you think that is. Is it a combination of authors of color not getting their works published, and also that there are just simply fewer people of color writing books? Well, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, there are definitely no shortage of people of color out there creating writing books. You can see that they are driving social media trends as well as driving the culture in general, which has always been true. Uh, that 90% of published books being by white authors is reflective of the overall industry being 90% white, uh, especially when it comes to the leadership, um, the C-suite members. So we're seeing a lot of gatekeeping happening, um, especially among the leadership in terms of the agents that are representing the authors and then the, you know, the, the owners and publishers at the publishing houses. And you know, they're, they're picking books that they're interested in where you know, people are human and they pick the things that they, they want to publish based on their own interests. And you know, white folks just aren't that interested in brown and black culture. And that's a real problem. And that's why we're trying to put more brown and black people in leadership, especially in our publishing house. Rebecca, in your opinion, how is the tr traditional publishing missing the mark when it comes to equity, justice, and especially profits? Well, they're driven by profits and they're putting profits before people. And that's a real problem because that leaves out a lot of people that need their voices heard. Because again, if you're catering to a you know white leadership and a white audience, you're picking books again and again that look white. Um, so equity in terms of publishing across the board isn't happening, even with white authors. The average royalty rate is 10%, where at Row House, we're offering a 40% uh, royalty share, which is huge. Four times industry average is scary for a lot of traditional publishers, but that's what we intend to do. We want to scare them into, you know, providing more, you know, fairer and more equitable contracts. So we also have a $40,000 advance that's across the board uh, for all authors, regardless of platform, um, which is revolutionary in that we're paying people not only what they deserve, but we're giving them enough money to actually build their platform, to hire the right editors, to get a marketing plan together. Um, and that's going to allow them to be more successful overall. So Rebecca, you basically nicely outlined your business model just now. It's 40-40 split, right? A $40,000 yeah. advance with a 40% royalty. As you say, very generous. You don't see this uh, elsewhere in the traditional publishing world, but you give that to every author, regardless right. of their past success or experience. Tell us how you came up with that split and how do you defend that you're giving the same to every author, regardless of past performance? Well, I'll start with the, the last part. Um, how do we defend it? It's because people who have smaller platforms traditionally get much smaller advances. And how that's problematic is, is because if you have a small audience and you get a small advance, how could you possibly build your platform with, with no money? Um, so, you know, authors that come in with a large platform don't need that. But the deal is very attractive to them on the back end with that 40% royalty, because if they're selling a lot of books, um, they're going to get that, that bigger paycheck in perpetuity, which is very exciting for them. So we're attracting authors who could easily go to another publisher and get 10 times the amount that we're offering in terms of an advance. They, they really love the idea at first of, you know, being able to be part of something that has a true mission um, in inclusion and diversity and equity. But second, they make more money. 
Um, and you know how we justify it also is that we become partners with our authors. We're not just you know leaving them to their own devices to be able to build their platform. We really want to help them with a marketing plan and tools that allow them to be successful. In fact, I had a meeting this morning with a very successful book publicist uh, by the name of Kima Jones, who's taking on some of our books. Um, we're covering the cost for our authors to make sure that uh, you know their book is is widely seen. And, and I think that that is beneficial for all parties involved. Uh, people in the beginning said that it was impossible, that there's there's no way that we can be profitable with these numbers. And we're proving them wrong already. I just want to follow publishers. Up, real quick, sorry, sorry. I just want to follow up on, on your the thought process behind that 40-40 split and mm -hmm. where that comes from. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. So 40 is a, is a big, important number, uh, you know, culturally, uh, spiritually, religiously for a lot of people. But for us, it's in tribute to 40 acres and a mule. It was a promise to Black Americans that was uh, never made good on. And we think that it's, you know, reparative justice is a big part of what we're doing here at Row House, um, not only in the leadership, but we have so many people who have stepped up to volunteer and offer their talents. Uh, our, our legal team is completely pro bono. We have incredible mentors in all areas of finance and publishing that have, have you know, lent their, or lent their, their talents to this, to this effort. But yeah, the 40 acres in a mule is, um, you know, it has not been delivered on. So we're we're all trying to do our part to to really repair what's broken, but also to provide opportunity for people, quite frankly, that deserve it. Um, black and brown people built this country and have yet to benefit from the the wonderful resources and the opportunities that it offers. So Rebecca, traditional publishers can offer six to seven figure advances uh, for mm -hmm. books we were just discussing. What are the types of books that get those kinds of advances? Because I know that you previously worked at a publishing house before starting your own. Yeah, I was a writer. At a, I have two books with a publisher that was the largest spiritual and personal development imprint in, in the world. And, you know, the, the big advances span all genres. It's really predicated on the platform of the author. And that goes back to privilege. So having a huge platform and having, you know, a big social media um, also touches on race and, and gender inequity. Um, we've seen uh, Instagram censor many activists, uh, black and brown folks. I myself have been censored many, many, many times on Instagram for saying nothing more than, you know, white supremacy. You know, that gets flagged right away. So we, you know, we use as black and brown activists, we use code when we're when we're uh, expressing ourselves on social media. So building a platform, even on a free uh, platform like Instagram or Facebook um, is incredibly difficult and uh, prohibitive for black and brown people and LGBTQ and disabled folks as well. So we're trying to, you know, help them get past those those obstacles and really, you know, build a presence that more people see. Rebecca, right now on screen, we're sort of seeing it flipping through the catalog of, mm -hmm. of books that you're offering there at Row House. When it comes to making the decision about who you're going to publish, what are you look what are you looking for in the author? What are you looking for in the content of the book? And, and is it strictly putting people of color, the black and brown community uh, in print and published through Row House? Or are you looking at, at the whole universe of authors? We're looking at the whole universe of authors who are writing through the lens of social justice. And that is the most important part. Um, you know, we have a children's imprint as well, Wheat Penny Press, that is putting out, you know, many successful books, including my own series of children's books featuring a brown little girl. And, you know, we, we talk about being the intersection of personal uh, development and social justice. And that is reflective in all of our titles, whether it be uh, business, self-help, literary memoir. It's important that our authors are committed to a social justice practice in their work and in real life, and that they're committed to the idea of community supporting each other and each other's 
efforts to, you know, to grow their platform and to reach more people. So you'll see that our authors, if you follow them on social media, you see that they behave like family, um, shouting each other out, talking about each other's projects. And, and that's really important to have that culture of community. You know, Row House uh, is called Row House because I grew up in a, a brick row home in New Jersey on the Delaware River. And while it was a working class community where many of us lived below the poverty line, we really showed up for each other and we supported each other. And that's how we survive as a community. So I wanted to bring that same, you know, culture to the company that I'm building where people really, you know, um, just, you know, not putting, you know, profits first, not putting their own popularity first, but really helping to raise each other up so that we are all successful. All right, we're gonna to have to leave it there. Rebecca Baruki, a Row House founder, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it.